Hi, I'm Doug Hayhoe, and I've written a series of short video essays and podcasts on science, faith, and other topics. Most of the videos relate to one of God's two books, Nature or Scripture. This video, The Benefits of Walking, relates to both books. For research shows that although walking pays off physically, it also has mental, social, and spiritual benefits. I grew up in a busy family of eight children. No wonder our parents went out every night for an evening walk. I was never curious enough, however, to ask them what they talked about as they walked, unfortunately. No doubt my father shared disappointments with his business, and my mother talked about her challenges at home. Perhaps they discussed problems that our local Christian congregation was going through. Maybe they just needed the quietness of the evening away from a busy job and family, while at the same time getting good physical exercise. I don't blame them. In the introduction to his book, In Praise of Walking, written in 2019, Shane O'Mara, professor of experimental brain research at Trinity College Dublin, writes, Walking is hugely beneficial for our minds, our bodies, and our communities. Walking is holistic. Every aspect of it aids every aspect of one's being. Walking provides us with a multi-sensory reading of the world in all its shapes, forms, sounds, and feelings, for it uses the brain in multiple ways. Walking together can be one of the best experiences of walking. That's all from page three. This one paragraph from Shane O'Mara's book motivated me to write this essay. So here's a picture of him in Ireland. In this book, O'Mara does an excellent job at explaining the scientific basis of walking as well as its physical, mental, and social benefits. Unfortunately, he omits the spiritual benefits of walking. Although he's for social walking, he's careful to say he would almost certainly never walk a pilgrimage. That was on page 165, referring perhaps to the Camino de Santiago. First, the physical benefits. Walking benefits the body in many ways brain, heart, arteries, organs, gut, as well as muscles. Most of these benefits can be backed up by substantial research. Omara discusses some of these in his book. Concerning the heart, for example, he summarizes the research this way. Quote, we can safely and reasonably conclude that high levels of activity, principally walking, can, along with dietary change, markedly help protect the heart against factors that promote heart disease. Moreover, these factors can be reversed both by activity for the better or inactivity for the worse. These malign changes can be reversed quickly by walking and walking lots, whereas a sedentary lifestyle worsens them. The average person walks 5,000 steps a day, according to a 2017 an analysis of people who carried smartphones. In his book, Omar notes, quote, I always want to hit at least 9,500 steps per day, which my fo phone records, but I prefer getting above 12,000 steps per day, and I'm really happy with more than 14,000 steps per day. Now, my brother-in-law, Randy, has not read Omara's book, but he averages 14,000 steps per day. I'm happy if I do 9,000 steps a day. In 2023, a large European research project on the health benefits of walking was published. It involved 227,000 participants who were followed for over seven years. The results were striking confirmation of Omara's conclusion. Walking 4,000 steps a day significantly reduced mortality rates, not just from cardiovascular conditions, but mortality from all causes. Any additional 1,000 steps led to a further decrease of 15% for mortality of all causes. Now here's the uh, chart giving the results, the health benefits of walking. You can see at the bottom, every time you add another 1,000 steps you walk, you reduce your mortality by 15%. Quite remarkable. You can, to look at this in more detail, you can look at my written essay. This 2023 study was a wake-up call that he reverberated around the world. Prominent news outlets in North America and Britain, such as CNN, Newsweek, and The Guardian, all reported on it. Then, in 2024, an Australian research report 
provided further evidence for this clear conclusion. Now, there are also strong mental and emotional benefits to walking. When my mother-in-law suffered from depression, her doctor prescribed walking outside as the best medicine. In his chapter, A Balm for Body and Brain, Omara explains why this works. Quote, Attention restoration theory is the idea that the natural environment has profound restorative effects on our well-being and that the human experience of the natural world markedly assists in maintaining and fostering a strong sense of subjective well-being. Omara then lists three factors necessary for a walk to be truly restorative to the brain. It should take you away from your normal surroundings. It should contain interesting visual elements and sensory elements. And third, it should be expansive with some degree of extension. In 2011, a study was done in Ottawa showing that walking outside restores our mood. The weather there in Ottawa can be very cold in winter and hot in summer. So the large campus of Carleton University, situated in Ottawa, has an extensive underground tunnel system for students to use. 150 students walked between the same points on opposite sides of the campus in this study. One group, randomly assigned, took the underground tunnel route. The other took the outside route, walking in a naturalized urban space, past trees, plants, and along a riverbank. Both trips took 17 minutes. When participants rated their moods before and after the walk, the results were clear. Those who took the outside naturalized path experienced an improvement of approximately one-third in their self-rated mood scores relative to those who took the underground tunnel route. Omara reports on other experiments in recent years that give the same result. Walking in a natural or naturalized environment positively impacts our mood and emotions. It's even more interesting to read that, quote, walking and other forms of aerobic exercise can also have a profound effect on our learning and memory, end quote. With his experience in brain research, Omar's discussion of these topics comes with a certain amount of authority. But he also draws some simple conclusions. Use it or lose it, he says, is a primary rule that muscle cells obey. And the same is true of brain cells. Use them or lose them. And walking uses brain cells as much as it does muscle cells. What about the social benefits? The social benefits of walking with a friend are obvious. You get physical exercise, which body and brain both need, and you enjoy social interaction, which we also need. My sister Alice has walked and hiked with friends for quite a few years since retiring. She walks on urban trails and sometimes on the Bruce Trail or other conservation area trails. She also goes on a special hiking trip overseas or out west each year. It doesn't matter whether it's warm and sunny, cold and snowy, or even rainy. She always enjoys it. So here's a picture of five of them walking in the rain with uh, raincoats on, just enjoying the company, the physical benefits of walking, and the mental benefits. In his chapter, Social Walking, Omara describes the complexity of walking with friends from the point of view of how the brain and body are functioning. It's worth quoting a little. Social walking involves coordinated and simultaneous action in multiple brain regions to control one's own trajectory and direction of motion and to predict the trajectory and direction of motion of those who you are walking with. Critically, each individual must use these predictions to try and simultaneously synchronize their movement with that of the other person or group while often doing something else like talking or singing or chanting. This is a difficult problem, so much so that robots can't even do it yet. What about the spiritual benefits of walking, however? A walk is a great time to reflect on the day ahead of you, especially if walking increases the functioning of the brain, as research seems to suggest. You can also reflect backwards, thinking about the day behind. And if you're a Christian, you can use this time to pray. A retired pastor who lives near us is a great example. As he walks, he's so involved in prayer and petition that he often doesn't see me until I almost run into him. He may have retired from leading a large church, but he hasn't retired from praying for all the people there and in many other places. You can also use walks as an opportunity to sing songs and hymns that warm your heart. This is especially useful if you don't have a singing voice. 
The only person who will hear you is God, assuming you don't shout at nearby houses. And God doesn't care how you sing. If you're short in memory, you can have the lyrics ready to look at on your smartphone. But beware of talking on the phone while you're walking. Research has shown that walking while talking on a phone is bad for your health. Something I found useful for my walks is having the scripture read into my hearing aids. Many Bible apps can send readings to earbuds or hearing aids. There's nothing like the big picture you get when five chapters of the Bible are read to you in 25 minutes. In addition to listening to scripture, some people listen to Christian podcasts on their walks to keep them aware of important truths and perspectives. When I walk with my wife in the afternoon, however, we usually talk together and pray for our family. One of the most famous walking stories in the Bible is about two disciples traveling to a town 11 kilometers away. That's in Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. This was just after Christ's death and resurrection, and they didn't know what to make of the events. Then a stranger joined them in their walk. He began to explain the events in terms of messianic prophecies and scripture. So there's a famous painting in the public domain of the two friends and the third friend that joined them and explaining to them the uh, what happened in the resurrection. The climax came when they persuaded the stranger to stop with them for a meal rather than going on as he had planned. When he broke the bread and gave it to them, so they saw the nail prints in his hands, they immediately recognized that he was the Messiah himself, Jesus risen from the dead. For them, that was no doubt the greatest walk of their life. So, get out walking. Keep your body in tune, your mood upbeat, and your mind sharp. Invite friends to join you. Or, if alone, walk with God. Meditate on his promises. Listen to his word. Pray to him and praise him, even while observing nature, flowers, animals, trees, and clouds. Thank you.